Last night at this hour, we brought you the first report of John McCain's speech in Philadelphia, in which he attacked Trumpism last night without ever mentioning President Trump's name. And of course, Donald Trump reacted to that today in his small-minded and always ugly way. And Trump himself described his reaction as ugly. Before we show you the Trump reaction, let's take another look at the portion of Senator McCain's speech in which he defined the essence of Trumpism while railing against it. To abandon the ideals we have advanced around the globe, to refuse the obligations of international leadership, and our duty to remain the last best hope of Earth for the sake of some half-baked, spurious nationalism cooked up by people who would rather find scapegoats than solve problems. And here is how the President of the United States responded to that today in a radio interview. You heard what he said people, yesterday, people, uh, Senator McCain. Yeah, well, I, I, I hear it, and people have to be careful because at some point I fight back. Yeah. You know, I'm being very nice. I'm I being very, very right. nice. But at some point I fight back, and it won't be pretty. It won't be pretty. It is a comment like that that will always bring to mind the Trump cabinet member, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, who has been quoted as calling the president a moron. And the wonder of the moron story, the most amazing thing about the moron story, is that at 270 days into the Trump presidency, only one cabinet member has been quoted as calling the president a moron. Only one. The president who says when he fights back against John McCain, it won't be pretty. Only one. The five and a half years John McCain spent as a prisoner of war in North Vietnam were not pretty. And every day that John McCain was in that prison in North Vietnam, Donald Trump was evading service in the military and possible assignment to Vietnam with the kind of note from a doctor that rich kids in those days were obtaining to claim physical disabilities that made them unfit for service. And now we have a president of the United States, a commander in chief, who psychiatrists are saying is unfit for service. They have a note about this president now. And Donald Trump's case, his doctor's note, to keep him out of Vietnam was about a sore foot. He doesn't have to tell us that it won't be pretty. He never has to tell us that it won't be pretty when he next attacks John McCain, because nothing Donald Trump ever does is pretty. And we've seen him attack John McCain before. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. And a half years He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. It won't be pretty. Casey Hunt caught up with John McCain today and got his reaction to the president's threat. Mr. Trump said on the radio, I heard and people have to be careful because at some point I fight back, at some point I will fight back, and it won't be pretty, talking about you. Uh, I, I don't comment on what the president says. I comment on what he does. And... I will say that I have, I have faced some pretty tough adversaries in the past. I'm not interested in confronting the president. I'm interested in working with the president. That is what dignity sounds like. That is what professionalism sounds like in someone serving in government. Those are alien concepts to Donald Trump, dignity and professionalism. And so Donald Trump continues to damage his White House, damage his presidency, damage his legislative agenda by attacking and threatening senators like John McCain, whose votes he will need in order to achieve anything in Congress. John McCain just won re-election to a six-year term. He is 81 years old. He will not be running for another term at 87 years old. And now that John McCain has been diagnosed with brain cancer, he may not complete his term. And so John McCain is not playing the kind of games that Republican senators usually have to play with Fox News. Watch what happened today after Casey Hunt asked her question that you just saw and got the answer that you just saw, and then a Fox News correspondent asked a question 
that completely ignored what Senator McCain had just said. We're going to back up this video a little bit so that you can hear Senator McCain say once again in a calm and sane professional tone, I am interested in working with the president. Those are the last words Senator McCain says before the Fox News question. And you really, really have to watch this answer. I'm not interested in confronting the president. I'm interested in working with the president. Thanks very much for your time, sir. I really appreciate it. Senator McCain, just a quick question. Has your relationship with the president raised to the point that you are not going to support anything that he comes to you and asks? Why would you say something that stupid? Why would you ask something that dumb? Huh? My job as a United States senator is a senator from Arizona, which I was just reelected to. You mean that I am somehow going to behave in a way that I'm going to block everything because of some personal disagreement? That's a dumb question. Thanks, guys. Thank you. That's a dumb question. I, I could just watch John McCain walk away after saying that's a dumb question all night. I could just watch that video all night because what you see there, what you see there is a senator who is not playing Fox News's game anymore, not playing the Trump News Network's game anymore. That's a dumb question. If you're a student of the Senate, there are few things more exquisite to watch than the senator who knows he has nothing to lose. John McCain is not the only one. The Republican chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, Bob Corker, is not running for re-election, and he said today that he stands by every negative word that he has said about the president in the last couple of weeks, including the line about the White House being an adult daycare center and that the president has us, quote, on the path toward World War III. Senator Corker says, my thoughts were well thought out. Look, I didn't just blurt them out. And that includes Senator Corker's comment about the castration of the Secretary of State. Last week, Senator Corker told The Washington Post, you cannot publicly castrate your own Secretary of State. And that provoked this exchange with the Secretary of State on Sunday. You don't want to say anything about uh, the Sen Senator uh, calling, suggesting you've been gelded before the world, and that's not anything that bothers you? I checked, I'm fully intact. <laughs> the Secretary of State, is prepared to answer that question, to say that he has checked about his castration. But in that very same interview, as we showed you last night, despite Jake Tapper's repeated attempts, Rex Trillison refused to deny that he called the president a moron. And Rex Trillison knows that every time he refuses to deny calling the president a moron, he is once again, in effect, calling the president a moron, as he did repeatedly in that interview yesterday, on Sunday. This castration thing, this is Republican talk. Republican men are now on record in the last year or so talking about male genitalia more than is normal in American politics because normal in American politics is exactly zero references to male genitalia. That is what is normal. But the age of Trump has changed everything in Republican politics. And like Donald Trump says, it's not pretty. He referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee you. The one thing, the one thing that Donald Trump never has to tell us is that the next thing he's going to do won't be pretty. At some point, I fight back, and it won't be pretty. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.